So in this example, guys, uh, we want to find the intervals on concavity and the values of inflection. So yeah, so obviously what we're going to want to do in this case here is um, go ahead and use uh, find the second derivative. So first derivative, we could replace this by putting in the denominator, right? And then we could do the quotient rule. But we really don't like doing the quotient rule anyways, right? So another thing that we could do, Sydney, is just do the um, power rule. So by applying the power rule, I would have a negative 6 times x squared plus 3 ah, times negative 2 times 2x. Yes? No? You got to do the chain rule? Yes? No? Are we good with here? Everybody got to this point. OK, but now we have to do the derivative again. Now again, I could rewrite this and do the quotient rule. But again, no, I, now I, have, I can say also I have a product. So why don't I just use the product rule? I would prefer the product rule or the quotient rule. So I do f double prime. The derivative of the first is going to be a negative 12 times x squared plus 3 times the negative second plus negative 12x times negative 2 times uh, x squared plus 3 to the negative third times 2x. All right? So it seems like a lot's kind of going on here. Um, and so well, maybe we can kind of clean some things up and then you look at some uh, denominators and kind of see what we need to do. So therefore, I could have this is going to be a 12 over x squared plus 3 squared. Over here, everything that's in the numerator is a negative 2 times 2x, which would be a negative 4x, times negative 12 is going to be a positive 48x. And then that's all over x squared um, plus 3 cubed. Right? Now, if I wanted these to be common denominators, I could multiply by all I need to do is just multiply by an extra x squared plus 3, right? x squared plus 3. So when doing that, to save myself a little space, I'm just going to do it over here. Um, I'll have 12 times x squared plus 3. Sorry, a negative 12 times x squared plus 3 plus 48x all over my common denominator of x squared plus 3 cubed. By doing a little math here, simplifying this, I get negative 12x squared. Um, that's negative 36x. Oh, no, sorry, negative 36 and then plus 48x. I don't recall that was exactly what I had before. x squared plus 3. Yep, negative 12. Oh, 48x squared. Why am I getting an x squared over there? Oh, that is. The x and the x are combined, right? I forgot to multiply these x's. You guys see how x and x would give you x squared? I knew there was something else I was missing. All over x squared plus 3 squared. Simplifies here to a 36x squared minus 36 all over x squared plus 3 cubed. Why am I writing these? And which we could simplify one last time, factor out of 36, which is an x squared minus 1 all over x squared plus 3 cubed. OK, so let's go ahead and look at our second derivative, right? Because our possible points of inflection are going to be when our second derivative is either equal to 0 or undefined, correct? Uh-oh, we have a denominator. We have possible points of something being undefined. But let's look a little bit clearer. When we set our denominator equal to 0, is there actually any real numbers that are going to make our denominator equal to 0? Is there any numbers that are going to make our equal to 0? Well, if you're not sure, by visual inspection, set the denominator equal to 0. Obviously, if you cube root both sides, you're just going to get this. When you subtract 3, you have x squared is equal to negative 3. You can't take the square root of a negative number in the real number system. So therefore, you're good. So there is no values where, um, where the second derivative is going to be undefined. All right. 
But now, let's look about what about when it's equal to 0? Well, the equal to 0, remember we looked at kind of the point, guys. All you do is set your numerator equal to 0. So if you set the numerator equal to 0, you would have 0 is equal to 36 x squared minus 1. Well, we'll just divide out of 36 on both sides. That's kind of easy. And then you have 0 equals x squared minus 1. Add 1 to the other side. Take the square root. x is equal to plus or minus 1. So our possible points of inflection are plus or minus 1. Okay? So let's go ahead and um, set up our table. So we'll have x and f double prime. And we're going to check negative 1 and 1. So a point to the left of negative 1, I would say it would be negative 2. Between negative 1 and 1, I would say 0. And between 1, I would say 2. Now, when we're testing these, all right, we're going to plug them in. And we, again, we don't really care what the value is. We just want to know, is the value going to be positive or negative? So Brett, let's look at our final version of our second derivative. OK, a couple things to notice. Guys, whatever we plug into here for x squared is always going to make it positive. Whatever we plug in. And for this one, is always going to make it positive. Right? OK. So when we plug in a negative 2, we're going to get a positive over a positive, which is positive. Plug in 0. 0 squared is 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 36 is negative. So we have a negative numer numerator. And that's going to be a positive. Negative over positive is negative. And then 2, we could say at 2, you plug in 2, it's going to be positive over positive, guys, which is another positive. OK? Now again, these are points of, these are going to be our points of inflection. And do we change concavity here? Do we change from a positive to a negative, a negative to a positive? Yeah, so we have concavity. And these are points of inflection. They're not like asymptotes or anything else that wouldn't be points of inflection. So therefore, we can say f has, um, how I f has an inflection value. S has an inflection value at x equals negative 1. Since f changes from positive to negative, and f has an inflection value at x equals 1. Since f changes from negative to positive. Then, if we want to go ahead and find uh, the intervals of concavity, we don't have any closed intervals, right? So we know that the, we could say that f is concave up on the interval negative infinity to negative 1, union 2 to infinity. If we wanted a justification, we could say since f double prime is greater than 0. And we could say f is concave down on the interval negative 1 to 1. And if we needed a justification, we could say since f double prime is less than 0. Okay.